welcome back to the story of we bought a bus yes after talking about this radiator heater thing for the last two episodes we're finally going to tackle it admittedly this was the most scariest part of the reconstruction conversion thing uh, because if you get this wrong your engine doesn't really work because it overheats so getting this loop done correctly was very important I did quite a bit of research on YouTube and the Googles to try and figure out how to reroute this hose. Uh, most of the buses, however, I, in fact, almost all of them, were a much larger heater and uh, there was radiator fluid that flew everywhere and uh, sometimes you got it in your mouth. Um, luckily, even though this is a small heater, I still got to experience both. all up in my mouth. Didn't even buy me dinner. Now that the first tube is drained, we cut open the second one and drain it as well. Now that everything's drained, it's time to take the two ends of the hoses uh, and loop them with essentially two brass uh, L joints. Um, another piece of the tube. All I did was reuse part of the tube that I just cut off um, and create essentially this. I really hope I found some kind of sensor bar in post-production for that plumber's crack that I'm sitting here watching. Right, okay, now to remove all of the hose that used to connect the heater to the radiator. Let the heater battle begin. Okay, so this heater was a giant pain in the rear. Essentially, the screws were rusted out and stripped, everything was still connected, and nothing wanted to move. So at this point, I decided to get under the bus to try and dislodge something. Nope, didn't work. Time for Mr. Crowbar. Son of a... Alright, how about a hacksaw? Son of a... Okay, maybe my feet! We are victorious. And we can finally rip up this last piece of long mat. Okay, here's a quick little segment so things just aren't out of order. Uh, here we're still using the regular power drill. Uh, later on, I invest in an impact drill and my life has never been the same. The reason for the heavy struggle is there were still quite a few screws that we had not seen. And now it's way easier with an impact driver. And here we are, the beginning to what has currently been the biggest mistake I've made in the bus. So I am not an electrician, and there was no document or manual on how all of these electronics were wired up, yet I thought it would be a good idea to just go ahead and take everything out and hope for the best. We'll see how that works out in a few. Luckily, I did take copious amounts of notes and took many, many, many pictures, which uh, maybe you can see a collage here. Okay, so the end of the story essentially of all of this wire cutting and wire documentation and thinking I had a much better plan for this box, which, uh, you know, long story short, I actually did use this metal for patching part of the rust bits, which will be in later videos. Anyway, uh, after I had removed all of the wiring, I found out that I had to take the bus back for one more bit of information so I could get the license plate. Um, here's what my face looked like when I turned the key. The good news is, is that following all of the pictures and all the documentation, I got the bus rewired back up, took it to the inspection place, got the plates. However, 
I was pretty burnt out, and the only thing that happened for the next few months was just a snow-covered bus, and then we decorated it for Christmas. Join us for the next episode, where we finish ripping out the plywood flooring, and then we actually start reconstruction once the sun is shining and the temperature is up.